The tropics have continued to stay active as Tropical Storm Nadine made landfall in Belize yesterday, and now Hurricane Oscar is set to make landfall in a few hours as it continues to move to the west towards areas like Cuba. Now, this hurricane wasn't even named early yesterday morning. It actually was a tropical storm around 11 a.m. or so yesterday, and it became a hurricane within about four hours as it underwent rapid intensification, and that is how this thing became a hurricane so fast. It is a very small hurricane in nature. And this is going to be bringing impacts to eastern Cuba here over the next several hours, including heavy rainfall, storm surge, and as well as high winds. Now, that might not sound crazy, but currently Cuba has a power crisis where many people on Cuba do not have power. So this storm is going to become something that a lot of people don't even know is happening, at least in the eastern side of Cuba. So that's unfortunate right now what's happening there. This is going to continue to move west, and eventually the Bahamas are going to see more impacts as this hurricane continues to move west and then eventually turns off to the north. Now here's an entire view of the tropics. We do have the remnants of Nadine that are currently located over Mexico. This is actually something that'll be moving into the Pacific Ocean later today. And again, this made landfall over here from the Western Caribbean Sea into Belize yesterday. A very rare situation where we have a tropical system that's crossing over Central and Northern America going into the Pacific Ocean and will likely become a new name storm. Milton was very similar, by the way. It was a tropical depression in the Pacific Ocean, crossed into the South southwestern Gulf of Mexico and then eventually became the second most intense hurricane of all time in the Gulf of Mexico at 897 millibars of pressure. So this is something that has obviously happened already once this year, but this time it's going in the opposite direction. It's going into the Pacific instead. And then we also have Hurricane Oscar, which again is approaching landfall right now near Cuba, as it is again still a relatively small hurricane. Now here's a closer view of Hurricane Oscar. Again, it is hours away from landfall in Cuba. If you didn't watch yesterday's forecast, you might not know this, but this actually had the smallest eye that a hurricane has had this year in the Atlantic Ocean with a three mile nautical wide eye, which is very small, by the way. Hurricane Milton was not even that small, and Hurricane Milton's eye was tiny, if you remember, as a category five hurricane. You'll notice that the convection continues to wrap around the center. It's actually been relatively organized. The reason why this did not intensify as much as we thought it might last night was because of wind shear, and it is, again, a very small hurricane. So even the lightest of wind shear can rip something like this apart that happened with Milton, by the way, before landfall in Florida. So there have been some problems when it comes to intensification. There was a chance that this actually could have made a run at being a major hurricane with how small it was. But again, the wind shear did hurt those chances. It is again approaching the east side of Cuba and will be making landfall later today. It did make a very close appearance to the Turks and Caicos, nearly made landfall in the Cockburn Town Island area back over in the eastern Turks and Caicos. And again, this will continue to move into Cuba as we go throughout the afternoon with heavy rainfall, storm surge, and high winds all being the main concern. Concerns. And hurricane hunters have been flying through Hurricane Oscar throughout the morning and afternoon. They are still observing pressure around 986, 987 millibars. That's very consistent with where it was at yesterday. So this is still a category one hurricane. Wind speeds have also been measured in basically the same facet where they are essentially the same as yesterday. It's a slightly, I would say, larger wind field than yesterday. But again, it's not a major difference. We are still going to be seeing the worst of the impacts in a relatively confined area upon landfall in Cuba. Now, here's the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center on Hurricane Oscar. I want to point out a couple of things right off the bat. The first of which is that this is moving to the west-southwest at 7 miles per hour. That is slower than yesterday. It was moving at about 12 miles per hour yesterday. So as it continues to move to the west and eventually turns to the north, it is expected to stay relatively slow. The other thing I want to point out is that this is still a Category 1 hurricane. Maximum sustained winds at 80 miles per hour. The peak at what it was yesterday was 85 miles per hour. So overall, in terms of the wind speeds, it hasn't really changed much from yesterday. It's been pretty steady in terms of intensification. The tropical storm force wind field is tiny. For reference, if this was making landfall in Florida, that would barely take up the Tampa Bay area in terms of size. It is a very tiny wind field, one of the smallest hurricanes that you'll really ever see when it comes to a wind field like that. Hurricane Milton, for example, had wind field sizes like this, basically taking up the entire state of Florida. So again, the tropical storm force wind field, very tiny. Hurricane warnings in effect for the Turks and Caicos and also back through parts of Cuba and then tropical storm watches in effect for parts of the Bahamas. This will weaken as it makes landfall and interacts with land and then by Tuesday into Wednesday, it will eventually turn to the north and east. The good news, Florida, we're all happy over there. This is not going to be heading towards Florida. That's the good news. Uh, the bad news is if you're along the east coast, you actually could see some rip currents, which is going to be something we'll have to watch for if you're heading towards the beach this week. Here's what the track looks like. Most computer models all in a consensus that this will turn again to the northeast. More 
more than likely we're going to see some impacts to Bermuda if this is still a tropical storm by then. Even if it isn't, we'll probably at least see rip currents up in that direction. The intensity guidance from the computer model is still indicating that this will be basically holding steady at least for the next 12 hours and then will eventually weaken more rapidly as it moves over land in Cuba. And then eventually after that, there's a chance it could intensify just a little bit as it starts to turn to the northeast. But overall, the impacts are mostly going to be tropical storm level across parts of uh, the Bahamas and as well as back through the Turks and Caicos. Now, beyond today and tomorrow, what are we talking about for the tropics over the next couple of weeks? Are we going to see more big hurricanes? Is the hurricane season winding down? Well, let's talk about a little bit. Let's go ahead and look at the GFS model for the next few days. Again, this is Hurricane Oscar. We'll be interacting a lot with Cuba over the next few days, and then we'll eventually move in the direction of Bermuda. But as we go into the end of October, one thing I want to point out is that the environment, especially back over in the Caribbean Sea, is actually going to be favorable for more more development as we go into the very tail end of this month and into early November. So we may or may not see at least a couple of more, more storms that form in the Caribbean Sea. Maybe even one strong hurricane to end off the season somewhere in the Caribbean Sea could form as it does appear like we're going to have a low shear environment and honestly a very favorable environment in general for tropical cyclone development. The GFS model does show at least something attempting to develop around the end of October, but I think as we go into early November is when we'll have to watch the tropics much more closely. And the weather pattern right now, this is obviously very long term, is calling for more of a large scale uh, ridge to build across the United States. What that basically means is that if a tropical cyclone were to develop, it would more than likely go into the Gulf of Mexico. Again, there's no reason to panic right now, just something to watch for as we go into early November. I do think we're at least going to have one more named storm, maybe two back over in the Caribbean Sea, and maybe one goes into the Gulf before the season is all said and done. Now back closer to home, we do have a little bit of severe weather to talk about this weekend into early next week, beginning with today. We do have a slight Light risk for severe weather in New Mexico. The main concern for today will be the potential for a couple or even a few tornadoes. The highest chance of that will be in far eastern New Mexico today. Tomorrow, the threat will eventually shift to the northeast. This will likely be our last day of severe weather out of this bowling ball trough that we currently have set up in the southwestern United States. The marginal threat extends from Texas and western Oklahoma back into central and northern Kansas. The main concern tomorrow will be damaging winds and hail, but there will also be a potential for another isolated tornado or two. I think our greatest tornado threat for tomorrow will more than likely be in central Kansas. The uh, NATO cast outlook actually for tomorrow bullseyes a 10% tornado risk back over in central Kansas. Though I know, no, blah, 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 blah. though I don't necessarily agree with the 10% probability, I do think that we're at least going to have a more elevated chance for a tornado in that environment, which is going to be in a pretty prime position with more wind shear available for supercells that do develop. So here's the timing for today and tomorrow. Supercell will attempt to develop later this afternoon in northeastern and eastern New Mexico. There will only be a few out there, but any of them that do stay discreet will have an elevated chance at a tornado risk. Flash flooding a possibility as well in northeastern New Mexico tonight. By tomorrow, this moves to the east. Overall, I think tomorrow's environment is going to not be nearly as favorable. We're going to have a lot more convection out in front of where those supercells will try to develop, and that will probably lead to more of some stabilization in nature, which will lead to less supercells, I think, that will be able to produce a tornado, but with how much spin we're going to have with this trough, there might be a tornado or two, again, primarily in central and northern parts of Kansas during the afternoon and the early evening before that threat really diminishes as we go into Tuesday as that trough begins to weaken. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. And as a reminder, we do have our new Drunk NATO phone cases on shopmaxvelocity.net for both iPhone and Samsung. You can check that out with the top link in the description below. And our limited release 500,000 subscriber merch is only available for about 11 more days. So you got just a little over a week if you want a sticker, a mug, a hat, a t-shirt, or even a beanie. So again, top link in the description below or shopmaxvelocity.net.